Today I'm going to show you how to code a simple app using a JavaScript framework called Aurelia. You can learn about Aurelia if you go to Aurelia.io and uh, read their Getting Started Guide. Is all I've done up to this point in the project is install Node.js, install the Aurelia CLI, and do AU new in shopping list. So if you follow those steps and get started, and then import the resulting project into your favorite editor, uh, you can follow along with this video. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is build a component for our shopping list here. So we'll call it shoppinglist.js. And when we name the class, we'll use camel case as is conventional. And let's set up an HTML file with the same name. This will pair our view with our view model. And we'll just wrap this in template tags like a standard web component. So just for a second, I'm going to move the message field over from my app.js over into my shopping list. And then we'll start building our list component. So we'll move this message property, but we'll add a require from, import the shopping list component, and render that component. And of course I need to actually start Aurelia. Okay, so I need to make it look a little better with H1 tags. And now we can start messing with our actual component here. So let's just change this title to shopping list. Actually make it a title. Change that in our view as well. So change this to a title field and you can see that re-render there in real time. So the first thing we need to do for a shopping list is add a list of items. So we'll just add a new array here, very simple and we need a way to actually add those items so let's create a new model class in here called item you don't have to do this but it's nice to have a model that actually has constructors that take the correct parameters and list out the fields that we have here again this is totally optional you don't have to do this i'll add a named and a purchased and generate a constructor for name here. So let's go over to the view and render some items. Item of items is our repeat block. We'll just put it right in the li field, uh, element. But of course nothing's rendering because we have none. So we need to add some items here. So let's import our item class. Again, totally optional. And let's add an item. Simple add item method takes an item name. And let's just push it to our array. So we'll actually construct an item and use that constructor we created before. Of course, we're missing a way to actually add the items through our view. So let's add a form. We'll add an input and a button. First I'll add a submit button. And I'll trigger the add item method, passing it a new field called name. Let's create an input for that field. Let's bind it to the name property but we haven't added that name property yet. So that's easy. Okay, let's try it. Okay, it's sort of working, but it's not clearing out our input. So let's go ahead and clear that out on each invocation of add item. 
Let's try it again. Okay, that's working a little better. But if I actually add blank items, that we don't really want that. So let's just wrap this in an if. Okay, and if I click the add button, nothing happens now when it's blank. Nice. So far so good. We're going to need some style to represent items that have been purchased. So I'm going to wrap our text in a span here. And we can use basic string interpolation in our templating using Aurelia to calculate a style. Probably the simplest way we could do this. Okay, but what we really need is a checkbox to mark off things that have been purchased. So this isn't too bad. We can just bind to that other property we put on our model, which I used in my string interpolation in the span. And there you go. That easy to basically reproduce the to-do list example as a shopping list. We can mark things as done. Pretty easy. But I want to update and save these items, make them persistent. So let's persist some JSON to the local storage. We'll just refactor this into a method. We now have a way to save items. So if I add them, they're actually getting stored in local storage. And that's not bad, except they're not loading when we render the component. So let's just look them up from local storage. So we actually have to parse the JSON here. And it's good practice to double check that that came back with anything. The first time we load this, it won't. Otherwise, we'll just set our items. Simple deserialization of data from local storage. Cool. Except some of my state isn't saving here. In particular, the purchased. Okay. So let's go ahead and update that. Pretty easy to fix that bug. So we just need a change callback and we'll trigger a new method called save items, which we actually added in a previous step. So anytime you update one of the items, we'll just go ahead and save it. And that's it. Pretty easy. So now we're persisting data in the browser. Let's go ahead and add some more functionality. Let's add another button, not a submit button, but just another functional button. And let's remove all of the checked items. We'll call it clear purchased. Pretty easy. So let's go author that method. Very simple, clean JavaScript here so far. So we're just going to clear purchased items from our list. Let's just filter the items based on the purchased flag, but in this case, not purchased. So we'll keep all the not purchased ones. And then let's save our items. Persist that change. Clear purchased works. Clear purchased. Refresh seems to be working. Okay, so that's basically all the functionality we need to do a basic shopping list. Looks ugly, but it works great. Let's just add one more piece of functionality before we
close here on this live coding session. Let's trigger a remove item method, passing it the actual item itself. And just write that method real quick, remove item. It accepts an item as a parameter and it updates the items field. We're going to filter by name in this case probably because that's as unique as anything. At least it works for our purposes. So we want to say not equals item.name. And again, we want to save the items array when we're done. So there we go. We can remove items. And those persistent changes work just like the other. Okay. So that's a pretty sophisticated bit of functionality in a very short amount of time. Let's just make sure it's working correctly. What if we uh, actually check these off and clear purchased? Everything's still working. But the first, next thing we really want to do is make it look pretty, and we're not going to do much of that right now, but let's just fix one thing that bugs me, which is our UL list style. Let's make it list style none and actually pull in that style sheet. Pretty easy to do in Aurelia as well. And the list item dot is gone. Everything else is still working. And in the next tutorial, we'll actually look at how to make this a little prettier. But it's basically working. That's a shopping list.